Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank. Joining me now is Dave Ramsey. He is the associate editor at the Arkansas Times. He is my go-to guy on what's happening with the private option and health insurance exchanges in Arkansas. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me, Roby. Let's talk about the latest developments. Just last week, we learned that there were five carriers right. submitted letters of intent to do business in Arkansas's health insurance exchanges. Uh, insurance Commissioner Jay Braffer says maybe more on the way. Do you think it's a good deal? Is five enough for good, healthy competition? I mean, I think that's an open question. Um, I think that generally state officials have been saying, you know, they view it as a big improvement on the status quo. Um, you know, in terms of a number, is five enough? Uh, it's, it's definitely, um, there should be pretty good competition between five carriers. Uh, the bigger question is, uh, will anything happen to change the, the current status quo, which is that Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield has more than 75% of the market? Now, just because you have five carriers doesn't mean that they're going to have, uh, that they're going to put any kind of dent on that market share domination. And the, qu the question is basically that they have such brand awareness, name awareness, and the fact they've been here for so long that right. they could definitely use that to catapult themselves into a more a bigger position of strength. Well, and that's where, that's where things with the private option get a little bit tricky. On the one hand, there's no doubt that the private option, you know, that doubled the number of people that were in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. So that's more customers, that means more carriers are coming in, and again, you know, having five carriers in the marketplace should be enough to have a, pr a pretty competitive marketplace um, and see them compete on price. But those 200,000 folks that are gonna be um, shopping for insurance as part of the private option, um, you know, th these are low-income people that will be coming through part of, as part of Medicaid expansion through the private option, but they'll be, they'll be shopping for private insurance. They're not going to be price sensitive because the deal with the private option is that the government is picking up the tab. Uh, so, in, you know, as the carriers are competing for those customers, they might be competing on various things, but price is not going to be one of them. Um, so what are they going to look for? Well, a name that they recognize, like Arkansas Blue Cross Blue Shield, mm -hmm. they may be able to dominate that market. And if they soak up those customers, then we may be back to square one. Could also be looking to, though, for benefits. I mean, I'm looking for a particular package of benefits that might uh, best suit my family's needs or my personal needs. Definitely. Um, and and there, in theory, there will be lots of ways for uh, the carriers to compete. Um, you know, there are, there are minimum standards because it's a regulated marketplace that they have to offer in terms of those benefits. So all of the packages are going to be pretty good. Um, the question is, those 200,000 folks that, that don't care about the price tag, what are they going to be looking at? And I think that's, that's kind of an open question about the, uh, the private option. But, uh, you know, I think what state officials would say is that the private option was really effective at attracting those carriers. Um, those five carriers are going to be competing not just for the private option customers, there's lots of other customers too that are going to be looking at price um, and that will impact what the premiums are. Now I should say part of the reason that the premiums are so important is not just because we, we care, you know, we want low premiums in the, in the private market and that benefits anyone that's shopping on the private market, but it's especially important because of the private option because it impacts the cost of this policy, right? The government taxpayer is, dollars exactly. The mm -hmm. government is picking up the tab, and, and for the first three years, it's all it's all going to be the federal government. Mm -hmm. uh, but down the road, the state is going to have to start chipping in. So if those premiums are low, that means less money that the private option policy costs. If the premiums are higher, then it's going to be more. We'll know more at the end of the month. We know that there are five carriers now. We know that's pretty good for competition. But the big number will be what those premiums come in at the end of the and month. And maybe more on the way. How would you gauge legislative reaction to? the five carriers submitting their letters of intent. Representative John Burris, one of the architects of the private option, seemed pretty uh, optimistic, pretty bullish on that. But what about beyond just John Burris? Well, I think that, I think that you're, how you react to um, five carriers coming into the market probably depends partly on what you thought of the private option to begin with. <laughs> for some reason, most of the people that push hard for the private option think uh, this is great, this is a great start. Um, and some of the folks that uh, didn't like the private option policy think this is disappointing, they, you know, they wish they had more. Um, you know, state officials did, 
sort of set the tone for this a little bit by talking about six to eight. Mm -hmm. um, and we may end up with six to eight, as you said, there's, um, there's the possibility that some of these multi-state federal plans may come in, um, and we may see one or two more of those. Um, but you know, in, in terms of expectations, you know, again, it just kind of depends on how you look at it. The one thing that I will say for folks like John Burris, David Sanders, um, in, in terms of the Republican lawmakers, and in terms of you know, administration officials, um, like John Seelig at DHS, uh, or Jay Bradford at the insurance department, they are really pushing the idea that this is a long-term project of building the market, right. and this is year one. So I think that the, the way they've kind of framed it is this is a good start, um, this is an improvement on the status quo, uh, and hopefully they're gonna be able to build the market and, and in, see an increase in carriers over time. Let's take a quick commercial break. I wanna come back and talk about what some other states are doing and then what might be on the uh, horizon for uh, private option and health insurance exchanges. I'm Roby Brock, this is Talk Business. We are back right after the break. I don't think it's gonna be an easy conversation uh, because they are very strong-willed. I think it's gonna be important to us that we know that you're somewhere in a facility uh, that looks after you, has compassion, has care, and you respect it. I mean, I'd love to look after them, I'd love to be able to take care of them, but I don't think I could. That'd be a wrong choice on my part. Arkansas's skilled nursing and assisted living centers provide quality care for our seniors. Farm Bureau helps protect its members in more ways than you might think. They've always been the voice of agriculture in Arkansas, working on behalf of folks like me when nobody else would. And Farm Bureau stands for the values that Arkansas families care about. They've protected my right to farm and make a living, which helps everybody who likes food on the table. You know what they say, Arkansas counts on agriculture and agriculture counts on Farm Bureau. The Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas. The State Chamber AIA is the leading voice for business at the state capitol and serves as the primary business advocate on all issues affecting Arkansas employers. Our mission is to promote a pro-business, free enterprise agenda and prevent anti-business legislation, regulations, and rules. Now more than ever, business matters. Learn more at ArkansasStateChamber.com. I was looking for a bank that could best protect my finances. This shared my passion for my business's potential. A bank that offered investment expertise. Linden support. Insurance guidance. A bank that delivered full financial support. That's how I found True Balance. True Balance. From my bank. From my bank. Delta Trust and Bank, the expertise to meet all your financial needs. One of the real advantages of Electric Cooperatives membership is having a voice in our state's energy future. Not a week goes by without important energy issues making headlines. These are issues that need to be discussed. And you should know that as policies are being developed, the cooperatives are looking out for our members, advocating what's best for you. We are your friends and neighbors. We are your local electric company. The Electric Cooperatives. We are, we are Arkansas. East Harding Construction. East Harding has provided client-focused construction services for commercial construction projects in Arkansas since 1974. Want your next project delivered safely, on budget, and on schedule by an Arkansas-based company you can trust? Visit www.eastharding.com or call Van Tilbury, President and CEO, at 501-661-1646. East Harding, client-focused construction. And we are back with Dave Ramsey. He's associate editor of the Arkansas Times, the guru on the health insurance <laughs> exchanges, the private option, all things health insurance in Arkansas. Um, all right, so before the break, we're talking about uh, the five carriers that have submitted letters of intent to right. um, do business in Arkansas with the health insurance exchange. Um, what about what's happening in other states with the private option and their health insurance exchanges? What are you kind of seeing that kind of piques your interest there? Well, I mean, I guess the, the one thing to say about the private option, you know, compared to other states is that most other places just aren't doing it. Um, when, the, when this policy first emerged, I think there was an idea that this was a way to get Republican support for Medicaid expansion and, the, and that we might see it in other states, but that really hasn't happened. Um, Iowa is, uh, looks like they're going to do a kind of partial version of the private option. Mm -hmm. 
Um, Tennessee may possibly be looking at it, although that looks like a real long shot. So um, one thing that stands out is just th how unique it is. Um, and if you look at a, if you know, it looks like about half the states are going to opt into Medicaid expansion and half are going to opt out. Um, and if you look at kind of a, a map of this, what strikes you is that the South basically opted out except for Arkansas. Yeah. And, and the private option sort of was this way forward for them. Um, in terms of the exchanges, you know, we have public information of about a dozen states um, in terms of how many carriers are going to be selling on the exchange. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have more than 10. That's obviously, you know, that would be a long-term goal. Larger for population so states primarily. These are, these are largely bigger states. Mm -hmm. um, some of them have, New, New Hampshire is only going to have one, so they're not going to have any competition wow. at all. So, it, it, you know, you can kind of see how, how, it, how it's going in different places. Um, you know, what Jay Bradford has said is that part of what helped Arkansas um, get the five was having this private option, having the, the additional customers. Um, but, you know, it, again, I, I think the big, the big thing to watch ultimately is not just the number of carriers, but what, what do those premium prices come in at? And, and again, you can have five carriers. Currently in the state, there's actually, you know, people talk about it as if there's only two carriers in the state. There's actually a lot of carriers. Yeah. Just almost all of them have less than, you know, 5%, less than 2% of the market share. Right. Um, so that's not really a competitive market. And I think, you know, it, it, is, it is possible that this, um, that the health insurance marketplace, or HIM, as I, I heard you, is that the proper <laughs> right. pronunciation? Well, that's the acronym <laughs> there, you know. It's um, whether that's going to be able to address that issue, I think that's an open question. We don't know. Um, and and w we will know a lot more, and I think this is what, you know, folks that are watching this are, are looking in places like California. The big question is, what do those premium prices come in at? When you, when you look at where it, the private option has failed in some other states, or some version of the private option has failed in some other states, and I'm thinking primarily of Mississippi and Louisiana, which took it up in some committee form right. a couple of times. Um, did it just seem to be a political football that uh, Democrats kind of brought up just so that they could let the Republicans kind of spike it in their faces and well, move I on? Th I mean, think it, that it they, didn't seem to be an earnest effort to make it happen. Well, I think that, the, I mean, <laughs> I think that the problem was there was an interest on uh, the Republican side and those states in, in doing it. Um, it was brought up, it was different than Arkansas because the idea was kind of kind of brought forward by Democratic legislators. Um, both in, in Louisiana and Mississippi. My sense in Louisiana is that they really wanted to do it, but, you know, there just wasn't, they didn't get any bites. Um, for whatever reason, in Arkansas, conservative legislators saw this as, um, as a different path, uh, as, as a kind of compromise third way that would achieve some of the goals of healthcare expansion, but, but in their view, you know, keeping up their conservative principles. And Republicans in Mississippi and Louisiana just didn't see it that way. Um, you know, I, I think that some of it probably has to do with a different political dynamic uh, mm -hmm. here with a, you know, you have a popular Democratic governor. Right. There's some Republican pushback. governors in those two states. And mm -hmm. I think that that's part of it. Um, I also think that, you know, you had some Republican lawmakers uh, in, in Arkansas who just got very invested in this issue um, and saw this as a way forward for what they view as conservative reform. and. You just didn't have that kind of buy-in in other states, so it, you know it may partly just be about the personalities here. Yeah, and well, you've uh, mentioned the insurance premiums as something to watch going forward. What else is there's there are deadlines coming up to meet. There's going to be some public outreach and education. This is a big, big ship that is turning in some ocean waters here. Yes. What's kind of the next big thing to be watching for? A couple of big things to be watching for. I mean, at the end of the month, um, the applications are due um, for the carriers to turn in their actual plans. Um, you know, that just because they've they've given letters of intent doesn't mean that they're they will necessarily choose to sell on yeah. the exchange. It also doesn't necessarily mean that they'll be approved. So we'll know an actual number at the end of the month. Um, part of that plan, they'll also be submitting premium prices. I mentioned that. Um, you know, this is supposed to go live uh, October 1. Yeah. Um, one of the things that that means is there's, uh, you know, when we talk about this, they'll talk about sort of the portal or, you know, the exchange. Really what we're talking about is a website where you right. can shop for insurance. Um, the feds, you know, most, most people that will be shopping on the exchange in Arkansas will be doing that through the federal portal. Um, but it will be up to the Department of Human Services here in Arkansas to build a separate portal for the private option customers, um, and that takes a lot of work. Uh, so they're going to be, you know, they're going to be in a dogfight to get that up by October one. Um, 
we're then, you know, we'll, the, the whole thing, go, you know, the actual policies go into place on January 1. Correct. Um, we'll also see what's called uh, navigators, which will be a political controversy. Um, there will be folks uh, who basically are paid to um, explain, uh, help, help people figure out, uh, navigate the process. Are those basically. temporary jobs or are those long, short-term, long-term jobs? Or? They're, well, they're, sh they're, uh, they're short-term jobs, I believe. I don't know for sure. I believe like the, the Census is free. Bureau, they're there to help out until the that's thing gets exactly up and right. running. Right, that's exactly right. right. Um, and and the uh, you know the reason that this is basically they're they're contracting out to various groups um, to get these folks in. Some of the groups they're contracting out to might be involved in reproductive health stuff that um, can become politically controversial. So there will be. I suspect that we we have not heard the last about sort of the navigators. Get ready for the that. word navigators to become part of the lexicon of the yeah. uh, Arkansas political the, vocabulary. The, the one other thing I'll say quickly about the the private option deal, you know, the way that all of this is played out, when the Supreme Court, you know, came up with their decision and basically, mostly upheld the Obamacare law, right. but they kicked this decision to the states. And th that at the time was seen as basically a victory for Obamacare. But in practice, what it looks like is about half the states are not going to expand mm -hmm. Medicaid, which means that expanding coverage to low income folks, which was a key goal of the healthcare law, isn't gonna happen in half the country. So this is about seven million people that they thought would be getting health insurance that aren't going to. And they will be getting in at Arkansas, ironically, you know, a pretty anti-Obamacare state because of this private option legislation. Lots of politics to play out on this because we still true. got a governor's race and a U.S. Senate race that this is all going to be, and legislative races that this could yeah, all be we'll, we'll swirling be, we'll factors. We'll be hearing in. about how various people either uh, saved us from Obamacare or enacted <laughs> Obamacare or caved to Obamacare and everything in between. And strangely, it will it will fall completely on partisan lines instead of policy lines. And that makes for good fodder for political writers like yourself and Fair myself enough. to uh, talk about. He's Dave Ramsey with the Arkansas Times. As always, thank you for being with us. Thank you, Roby. Great insight. I'm Roby Brock. You can keep up with the latest business and political news at our website at talkbusinessarkansas.com. You can even go to Dave's website, arkansastimes.com. Sure. I'm Roby Brock. We'll see you next time. Talk Business Arkansas is brought to you by the Arkansas Farm Bureau, the Arkansas State Chamber of Commerce and Associated Industries of Arkansas, the Electric Cooperatives of Arkansas, Noble Strategies, the Arkansas Healthcare Association, and Delta Trust and Bank.